Hi, welcome back. My name's Newman. <clears throat> this is my life with plants. And today, we're going to be checking out all my orchids that I have indoors for the winter. And I'm going to turn this thing off because it's a bit noisy. But it's there to keep the air circulating because that's really important, especially with all these orchids that I have in here. Anyway, Stay tuned. Okay, camera's on. All right, <coughs> welcome back to this update. If you want to know where my camera is, I've got a wedged in between a stall. Seems to be working out well these days doing that okay orchids that are indoors for the winter this is an update on how plants look and how they do and if they survive and all of that stuff uh, temperature in here is 16 degrees it's about 16 degrees must be little under 50 Fahrenheit and 70% humidity so it's pretty high this room is unheated there's no air conditioner no heating whatsoever the only heat that it gets is from downstairs and whatever heat that travels through the house so this is unheated that means that it gets quite cold in here at night but nowhere near freezing. First one I'd like to introduce is <coughs> this one. And this is a Miltonia DQ. It has a lot of new offsets on here. This thing has been growing through the winter Let's put out one, two, three, and a fourth coming out of here too. This won't be going outside, it stays inside all the time and the reason for that is the temperatures outside get excessively hot because we're just living in the city. But if you were living in the forested areas in Japan, it would be much more humid and you would have a lot more mist and cooler conditions but unfortunately living in the city and you're going to put these things out on the balcony no matter what you do no matter how much shade cloth you put up you can't stop the drying out process and these things they don't want to dry out dry as a bone and that can happen pretty quick out there in the summer so this will be an indoor grower um, it's got nice healthy growth as you see and I only fertilize it once a month and I use an all-purpose house hold fertilizer liquid fertilizer that contains calcium and magnesium and when I use my water, I just want to point this out because I think it's important and I see the difference. I'm going to show you a plant to prove this. Sorry, it's in Japanese, but um, this is dechlorinizer that you put in water for fish tanks. Chlorine burns. I don't know how many times I've watered my plants and the foliage comes out especially in cat, um, calatheas and things that have thinner leaves thinner leaved orchids too and then you get those tips that go black and they go all crunchy so that and the other thing is that you get a high salt build up it comes up on the surface of your potting medium and that's the chlorine This stops it, this neutralizes it. So, once again, 
You don't need a lot of this, just a couple of drops per couple of litres, a drop per litre. But the difference is phenomenal. Of course, we use it for fish and fish tanks, right? And they got sensitive skin and their gills and all of that stuff. They, they get, um, uh, their skin gets burnt. It shows you that it does burn, doesn't it? <clears throat> so you want to get that out of your water. If you want to be convinced to a degree, then we need to have a look at this. This is a fast growing plant which shows you the difference between you can see there that see these leaf tips see that especially the one down here this is your typical thing that happens when you have chlorine in the water see that it was even worse than that ever since Going back to this the second time, I used to use it a year or two ago. Now I've gone back to it because I've been watching a program, uh, plants uh, made, uh, made in Sheffield. So I'll put that link on there. But he's been using it too, and then um, all the new growth that's coming out, there's no burns on the tips. It's all gone. This one's got slight, but compared to before, the growth is much more clean, lush, and there's no burning. That means that the roots are not getting burnt anymore. Anyway, enough of that. They can go on and on. All right, let's get to this first one. First one I'm taking out here, Lycast. Some of you might say Lycasti. Even in the winter, with these cool conditions, I still water it because it stays actively growing. You can see in the bottom there, the roots popping out. It has this growth that's been growing here. Still got a way to go before it gets bigger. Um, it's a cool grower, likes to stay moist, doesn't like to be too hot, and it's been doing well indoors, no problems whatsoever. <clears throat> All of this leaf damage and so forth is because of the summer. The summers are so hot, and every now and then it gets stressed. But this new bulb is coming out, hopefully we'll get flower spikes coming out. It's a nice healthy plant. It had one bulb that rotted. There was an older bulb, but according to other people that grow these, that normally happens. They usually rot the back bulb. So you want to keep this one moist. It's growing in sphagnum moss. The sphagnum moss has no salt buildup. No saltiness or anything like that, and it's because of the water. And remember, when you're using um, sphagnum moss, it'll hold on to fertilizer a lot longer than bark. <clears throat> this one is a Dendrobium speciosum gracile called. So it has the typical Dendrobium speciosum racemus flowers. That means that they come down in like a bunch of grapes in profusion, but it'll have nice golden yellow instead. It's been indoors. I bought this because I don't have much trouble with Dendrobiums, uh, these kind of tough Dendrobiums. And another one is Kingianum. So this one's been growing indoors. It has active roots. It has this new bulb that's coming off here. And I don't know if it'll get bigger or not. 
it's been repotted and we can see new roots growth. <clears throat> There's actually one wrapping around onto the plastic in there. It does fine indoors during the winter. I could even probably test it outside. We got a kingy arm out there at the moment going through the winter. This is a dendrobium amosmum, which has beautiful, delicate, light pink flowers. And I bought this as cuttings that were rooted. And I've kept them moist all through the winter so that it can just keep growing. I get a little bit nervous about cutting dendrobium cuttings because for some reason when I do dendrobium cuttings they always die. And I've been reading up a lot about why they die and what am I doing wrong. I have no idea. <clears throat> Never used to have problems doing dendrobium cuttings when I lived in New Zealand. And it was a wet winter. Humid, wet and cold, but not quite freezing. Okay, this. This is a big monster, you can see there. I'll put my hand around these canes. This is a Catlia. That's an uh, intergeneric, is that the word you use? Hybrid? It might be. It might be just crossed with many, many kinds of Cattleyas. And you know what? There's no name on it and it didn't come with one. And I'm only just guessing what it is. I can't, I mean, I can make a guess, but that's not good enough, is it? It has big, huge yellow flowers, monsters, like the jumbo size Cattleya flowers, um, yellow, and it has purpley red labellum, or the lip. I'll try to put a photo up of the ragged flower when I got it, it was quite beaten up. But this was, this, also I keep watering like once every week or two. Um, not soggy, wet, just kind of moist. And um, it has new growth coming out on it. You wouldn't be able to see here, but these canes in the front here have bulges on the side, which means that um, new growth is coming. I got it for its flowers. The flowers don't smell too great, by the way. They're nothing special. Kind of a musty smell. Okay, next. I'm going to make grunting sounds because I'm on the floor. Well. Well. Being down on the floor. On this, no carpet or anything. I don't have carpet in here. This Dendrobium Yuki Daruma. Oh no, yeah, Dendrobium Yuki Daruma that's had a cane that rotted on it. This is from a friend, and I told her, hey, when I got it from you, your newest growth rotted away, and I don't know why I asked her. We had to talk about it. We don't know. Um, maybe. When she divided it, it was still the hottest month of the year, so it was just too hot for it, and it caused all sorts of fungal issues. And this thing is now stable in here. Um, it's in sphagnum and bark and pumice mix. I'm waiting for it to put out a new shoot. I've tried cutting it cane off here because this started to go downhill but it's stable now it started to go all soft and mushy in the center so I did a I did a cutting and I put I put melted wax on each end so that fungus doesn't get in and it's still in a tray of moss 
waiting for it to have a shoot. So that's what I'm waiting for here and if this manages to put out a new shoot then it'll be away and growing again but it has magnificent flowers. Big white flowers of almost black labellum. So that's the first basket. Keep them in baskets in here. So I'm just going to stop the camera and then move the next one over so we can have a look in there. So stay tuned. Okay, next basket of orchids. Thanks for staying tuned. This is Froggy. Froggy is going to go on the floor so I don't bust my knees anymore. <laughs> Is it going to be down here for a while? Uh, okay, that's better. Way better. Okay, let's have a look. Getting to some Cattleyas here. Cattleya Little Little Toshie Soliel. Did I get that right? And this one I repotted last year, just before the summer. It had, had a whole bunch of beautiful yellow fragrant flowers and it had started putting out these new canes and the new canes have good growth. It means that the watering schedule, everything has been done well. Um, they're still a little bit smaller than the original growth, but that's normal for repotting. I repotted it while it had a good active root system because I was just worried because I had some trouble with a lot of them when I bought them. They seemed to be sucking up water and the new growths are going all wonky and getting all black on the ends. So I don't know if that was the soil had become too acidic or whatever. Um, this still has the remnants of a salty mix, which was my fault because I wanted to give it slight doses dosage of fertilizer with every watering and that is too much even for a nice healthy plant I would to be safe I would have a very low dos dosage even lower than they recommend and I would do it once a month and then keep up your Calcium. Got to have that calcium. So you want to do that about three times a year. You can put the dolomite lime in as it is for a pot that size, a teaspoon. Or me, I put it in the water. And then the plant gets a, gets a little bit of dolomite lime. Another word for dolomite is magnesium lime. Um... They seem to benefit a lot from that. And fertilizers, you've got to be careful because they just upset the pH of the medium and everything, and then you can get salt build up, and then you get in big trouble. So, it's that one. There's beautiful yellow flowers of the red labellum. Uh, what else is going to say? So, everyone is kind of bent on fertilizing. You've got a special fertilizer for everything. But if you think about nature, nature doesn't provide everything in that perfect quantity that we're trying to achieve. They get what they need in very low dosages. Very low, I would think. All right, and that's why plants have the habit of producing more roots because they're trying to get more nutrients that they need. When you are providing it in dosages all the time, the plant has no need to grow roots. I mean, why would it 
need to grow more roots if everything's coming its way kind of thing. So I think roots behave in a in a fashion when you have a good sturdy healthy plant and it's trying to push roots out to gather more nutrients. I think that's what roots are designed for. So if you see your roots growing really well and you know that the plant is healthy, but don't mistake in that for just fertilizing all the time. As it builds up in the mix, and in the mix, all the rooties will die back really quickly. This next one is uh, Maxillaria tenuata. Is that what you call it? So it's the big flowering coconut orchid. Now, interesting enough is that it's winter now. One, two, three, four. It could be a flower spike. Five. It's got five new bulbs and it's winter. And it's loving it. And it's so cool. Right? It's under 50 Fahrenheit. Super cool. Um, in here, with their fan blowing all the time. I, um, I let it almost dry out. Almost, you know. So it's, I just keep it slightly moist, more or less. It's pushed out all these new canes. It's super healthy now. So that's telling me something. In the summertime, it was really, really wrinkly as anything. Uh, I wanted to give it more and more water, but it didn't want to do anything with it. So I think during the summertime or midsummer when it's at its hottest, you just try to put it in, in a cool position, right? as much airflow as you can, as cool as you can get it, and put up really heavy shade cloth, I think, you want to do that. This definitely didn't like too much heat on it. So I have uh, a very uh, thick shade cloth. It lets, it lets the light in in the sun. It's just the equivalent to it growing underneath a tree, like 50% or more shade cloth. And uh, once again, I have cut back on feeding because feeding has destroyed the growing medium. It pushed out salts in it, and they don't need it. This is proof they don't need it. I hardly ever fertilize it as compared to before, but I do have that calcium magnesium in the dolomite line. And I put a little bit in, like every couple of months and there you have it healthy orchid next one this is a cattleya of some sort and I don't have a name for it it didn't come with one I've been looking around and around and I just can't find anything so it's definitely looks a lot like that orchid at the back there Looks like it could be crossed with it because it's got very long straight canes with bifoliate so that it's pushing out two leaves out of each bowl, right? Boringiana. I think it's got Boringiana in it or something related to Boringiana because of how tough tough it is. So it was out during the summertime in the in a shady area, so it didn't get direct sun, but it was definitely super hot out there, and it didn't mind one bit, so it's very tough. Uh, it had beautiful yellow flowers and clusters, just like by Ringiana there, so you could have up to three or four per bulb, bulb pseudo bulb. It's got a nice healthy root system, even has a new cane pushing out here. And like all these other orchids, it still wants water. They don't want to go dormant at all. It wants to keep growing, so that's how it behaves. 
Next one. This one I was worried about, but it turns out to be a very tough, strong orchid. I don't know if you can see through the camera there, but this is kind of transparent and inside that you can see two f you can see flower spikes coming out. So that just goes to show you what kind of an orchid, how strong and tough this is. This is a now this is a Lelio Cattleya or a Rinko Lelio Cattleya, one or the other, Young Min Gold. Now I got this and it was going down the tubes, literally it was going to die because it was just in soaking, it's in a very tiny pot so I guess that saved it, but it was definitely wet and it's been in a nursery for probably a months and months and months, or most of the summer time, it survived. The root system didn't rot, so I thought this uh, this has to be a toughie. Turns out to be a toughie. So um, I repotted it in here. Um, it's been pushing out new roots. Got some kind of fungal spores in there, but that happens. Nothing to worry about. Um, it has a new cane which I just showed you with the flower buds and also there's another one pushing out and the interesting thing is well the good thing is is that this new bulb um, has produced roots and drawn up water for the older bulbs so these are kind of wrinkly and everything and um, it's come back to life so this is a really tough Cattleya that has multiple blooms per bulb and you might want to give it a try because I think it'll even grow in cooler conditions much cooler in here and even in the heat doesn't really bother it too much high temperatures in the summer so I recommend this one so the flowers will be a beautiful red and they are small yeah really red they kind of remind me of a lot of a Cattleya more than a Lelia, Lelia flower. They got more of a Cattleya labellum. And um, this thing doesn't know if it's bifoliate or unifoliate. So it's going to have one leaf per bulb or it's going to have two. So it's a intermixed hybrid that one. Next, this one's got a little salty on the top. That's my fault. Watering schedule has changed. Um, put out this new leaf, and as you can see, it's gone all black, and that's probably because it didn't have enough root system while it was growing its bulb, and it's rejecting its media because of the salt content, but um, that's taught me a, a lot about fertilizers and how to use them now. The newest growth is fine and healthy. Um, unfortunately this one would just grow roots to supply all the back bulbs, which is fine. It's got a long way to go yet. It's a Lelia uh, Mini Lelia Love Castle Happiness. So it's a pink flower with a yellow labellum. Still quite wrinkly here, but it's going to make it. It'll be fine. Next one from a friend. <coughs> you want to see her? She's in some of my past videos. She's an elderly woman who um, I met by chance. She was in the neighborhood where I work. I had a little walk around the neighborhood to see what's growing because that's something that I do. I look around and um, if I see an orchid that looks really old and it's been there for many years, I think, well, that's a good, good
good one to grow too because it's managed to survive and she once I met her she just you know she didn't hesitate one minute she said come on in have a look yeah she didn't doubt one minute that that I had good intentions and I'm a grower and love plants I guess she could see it in my eyes or something <laughs> She gave me this one, it's a Multonia, Multonia Goodyear Golden Wonder. So it has a bluish flower with a, a yellow, which way does it go? Is it yellow? Yellow with a, a yellow flower with a blue labellum. It's been pushing out this new growth here, it had flowers. Um, they keep it moist, it's growing in sphagnum moss. Um, once the summer comes around, the sphagnum moss will, will get a nice new collection of fresh green moss growing on it, which is what you want to see. That means that um, you're doing the right thing. Your moss turns on you and kills your plant. It's actually your fertilizing schedule it's bad it's killing everything this one is sigma uh, sigma tostelix radical radicals sigma tostelix sigma tostelix this, as I know, is a miniature orchid species that's related to oncidiums. Uh, let's see how this goes in the summer outside. Got to have that extra 50% shade cloth. And I'm going to be keeping a tr tray, a big tray full of water um, that I keep topping up and cleaning out and what the tray is for is is for me to be able to lower the orchids down that are hanging and I just stick them straight into the tray of water so they get a good drink overnight I'm going to try that method because I find it hard to keep them hydrated in the summer we didn't get a monsoon last year so that was detrimental to a lot of the plants um, we have no salt build up in there, which means that they were growing very well. This is from her. So it goes to prove something to you when you are scared of sphagnum moss. Don't be scared of using sphagnum moss. Sphagnum moss is a natural, very uh, good product to grow your orchids in because it doesn't irritate or hurt or as a lot of growers say, a stony mix moves around and damages the root tips and then they die back. Sphagnum moss won't do that. It also won't turn on you and destroy your plant if you are not being crazy with a fertilizer. You want to just do the bare minimum of fertilizing. Because the proof is in the pudding, it's right here. You have this old growing medium that's gone a little peaty okay but it's still it's still spongy just like sphagnum moss and the plant loves it it's growing well there is no salt build up there's no die back the roots keep pushing out everything is good okay so there you are this is proving that you don't need to use a lot of fertilizer yeah you can s cut back on it right now okay and be rest assured okay so that's the second basket um, if you want to stay tuned we're going to be getting to the big ones at the back there so I'll be back <laughs>